Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Ocean Chicks Horror Podcast. I'm your host, Karen, and tonight in the broadcast studio, I'm super excited. We have an incredible movie reviewer, a Rotten Tomatoes critic, as well as host of the YouTube channel Drumdums. Lee McCoy is here. So sit back and enjoy the show, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome to the Ocean Chicks Horror Podcast. I'm your host, Karen, and today in the broadcast studio, we have movie reviewer Lee from the YouTube channel, Drumdums. So excited that you're here. Hey, Lee, how's it going? I'm good, Karen. How are good. you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah, it's been a pretty I think this is the first today. time we've like officially met. <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. We chatted a little bit in your comment section in your videos a couple of times. Yeah, but. yeah, that's it. But that's it. Yeah. In case there are a couple of people out there that haven't heard of your, your channel before, can you tell us a little bit about what your channel is all about? It's weird because uh, when I first started, I always started out wanting to talk movies. I didn't right. really start out wanting to specifically talk horror. Okay. And I still, I still, I always tell people I'm like 85% horror. You know? Right. That's, that's a good number because I still, do, I'll do like Mission or Mission Impossible or Yes. Top Gun, you know, I, I like comic book movies, stuff like that. But my my heart is definitely horror. Uh, right. When I started out, I also did like drum videos because I'm a drummer. So that's kind of like what the name kind of uh, originated from. But oh, uh, cool. I, I veered away. That was like 2015 era. <laughs> and okay. then I started yeah. veering away from that. So that's like deep, deep. They're probably over like in a pit in the dark web somewhere right now. Those okay. drum videos. But <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> I, I hope that's a good answer, though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You answered all three questions in one shot. So it was very good. 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 Um, so 2015. Wow, I started in like 2020. I started my channel years and years ago, but I never used it. Yeah. And then I kind of fired it up. And, you know, when the pandemic hit, I kind of fired it up in 2020 and started doing the movie ruse. But I'm the opposite of you. I started doing all sorts of movies and it got streamlined into horror. <laughs> I'm not really sure. The, why. Yeah, that's I mean that that I guess that's kind of, I, I guess my mindset when I started was that I'm gonna be a horror channel. It, right. Yeah, it didn't it started out as I want to talk about movies. That's it. Right. And yeah. then it just kind of, oh, I guess the views don't hurt either because I started noticing uh I was getting more and more views for like Halloween. You know, okay. I think the first Halloween video I did was Halloween six, actually. Okay. It was like producer's cut just came out. I'm gonna talk about that. And then right. it just kept getting views over and over. And I was like, oh, okay. So people like when I talk about horror. Right. And yeah, that's kind of how it went. What I love about your channel and what drew me to your channel in the first place, because I've been watching for a while now, um, is that Thank you you review classics um all the way up to all the new stuff and even some B movies. Um, I think that's really cool because um, I find a lot of the bigger YouTubers do a lot of the mainstream things that are coming out like the second they come out. Yeah. So I thought it was really refreshing, you know, that you review some of the older stuff um, and talk about that, too. I think one of them was When a Stranger Calls. You reviewed that yeah. one. And yeah, yeah. yeah I did. Was... I'm a very impulsive type of person. Um, okay. I, and I will say, because I've been doing YouTube for seven years, that right. um, maybe maybe my mindset was a little bit different when I started. Right. Uh, it just kind of like beats along the way, you know, because I started as just a hobby. I, right. I didn't see this as I want to be just, you know, constantly putting out new uh, new release reviews every, you know, every week. Right. I just started as just kind of a hobby. And then eventually, as my channel started growing... Yeah. I did like talking about new releases, especially like horror and stuff like that. And I would try to get those uh, out as quick as possible. But right. one thing I love about my channel, and I think it's why I'm still doing it, is because I'm just very impulsive with movies. And I'll I'll, I'll throw on Shudder or something like that. Or uh, even in horror groups, people will start talking about When a Stranger Calls. And right. all of a sudden, I'm just like, hey, I kind of want to watch When a Stranger Calls now. you know. And, and right. usually, if I watch something... And it could be bad. It could be good. I've, if I want to talk about it, I'll go ahead and just put a review out. Right. And um, a lot of times it's it's movies that you don't see, you know, like freaking 8,000 videos for. You know, there might be, yeah. it's like a niche type thing and you'll see maybe 10 reviews right. for it. And so 
I guess that's just kind of a, a happy accident as I end up getting views for it because not too many people are talking about it. So right. yeah, but that's where my passion is. I love talking about older, older films, especially like early seventies, um, eighties, you know, even not. Yeah. That's where my heart is. I, I, I like newer movies. Don't get me wrong. But right. as far as like rewatchability goes, man, I could throw in those old seventies movies and eighties movies just almost every day, you know? Yeah. What are some of your favorite 70s horror movies? Um, I, well, if I go into like some of the deep cuts, I really liked uh, like Alice, Sweet Alice. Uh, uh, well, actually, Alice, Sweet Alice is 70s. Did you say 70s? Yeah, you did, 70s. Yeah. Or 80s. yeah, Alice, Sweet Alice is. But then if you jump over into like uh, 80s, like, uh, like Madhouse is really fun. Madhouse mm -hmm. is, and Happy Birthday to me are both birthday slashers, you know? Right. Um, uh, you put me on the spot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Isn't of, that a tough question? What's your it's, favorite it's movie tough from 1985? <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes when there's a million, you know, choices that, you know, it's hard for them to, like, you know, jump out right in front of your face. But, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like talking about, you know, older, of course, Friday the 13th. I, I like talking about those. Um, right. You like Halloween. slashers? Like slashers? Yep, slashers. Kind of thing? Yeah, slashers have always been... Probably my favorite subgenre of horror. I, I love right. talking, especially those deeper cut slashers. And then you can get into your jellos and Italian horror. Um, yeah, I, I even did like a top 50 favorite slashers just because right. it's like, God, there's just so many. I did three top tens of uh, slashers. One of them was yeah. like modern slashers. And then right. one day I was just like, damn, why don't I just do a top 50? <laughs> and I did right. like a top 50. So, That's and I can't cool. think of two of them right now. No. <laughs> But you like the Halloween movies? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Halloween was... Uh, I mean, Halloween's my favorite movie, the, the first Halloween. And Those are great films, yeah. Funny enough, when I got into YouTube in 2015, uh, one of the first reviews or first videos that took off was the Halloween update. And it wasn't even for this new incarnation with David Gordon Green and all those guys. Right. It was before when Adam Marcus was going to be doing Halloween Returns, okay. which was a script that was... Uh, it was dropped as soon as, uh, you know, they started doing the David Gordon Green uh, movies. But right. back then, for me, anyway, I felt like Halloween, not really a niche thing, but, you know, it, was, it had been 2000, like 2009 since the last big one with Rob Zombie. So Halloween right. had kind of just kind of settled for a while. So right. that's when I started YouTube. And um, I started talking about Halloween, and I didn't think really too many people were talking about it, but. I do. I love that franchise so much, you know, just because I guess there's just a lot of variety. I've always been attracted to Michael Myers as a character right. from, I guess, a psychological standpoint. Yeah. So, and, and I've always, I've been a Halloween fan pretty much, God, s since I was a teenager, you right. know, since, since I saw, out. yeah, since I saw four in the theater back in 88. Wow. So yeah, Halloween's always been a, a big, a big, yeah, I think everybody has their favorite franchise. Like what's your favorite franchise? I, I, Hmm. I, I think I would probably say Halloween as well. I was going to say Friday the 13th, but <laughs> there's, there's been so much talk in videos on it lately that I'm going to say Halloween. And I okay. like the Scream franchise too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Scream. I yeah. mean, Scream's having a, a big movement right now. I mean, there's the new movies coming out real soon next year. Yeah. So I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Scream fan, so for sure. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about uh, Nev Campbell? Oh, wow. Out. Yeah, <laughs> that was it, it kind of threw me for a loop at first because I, you know, I thought for sure. Oh, yeah, she'll come back because yeah. she's in the last one. They're doing yeah. like a new trilogy. Right. Um, but, you know, I guess sometimes these things happen, you know, if, if it comes down to like contract negotiations or, or money, you know, right. and uh, I didn't expect that to happen. No. And we we all don't know what, you, uh, you know, what happened behind closed doors. But right. uh, do you think this could still change? Like yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what a scream would look like without um, Sydney right. because it seemed like Sydney was she took a back seat in Scream Five. Yeah, I think you would agree with that, right? I haven't seen Scream Five, but I've heard. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, I mean, she wasn't upfront as much, and I think right. it's even kind of like marketed like that. You know, they're they're re they're introducing this new cast and everything. Yeah. So maybe that's. Um, kind of the direction they're going with it then so that they can mm -hmm. keep it going 
right? Are you going to watch Scream 5 before the new one? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I will. I will. Eventually, I'll get to it. I'm just yeah. not, I don't jump. I wait. I always you wait. wait yeah, some people bit. do that. Yeah. You know? um, That's refreshing, I, actually. Yeah. You know, if yeah. I get a chance to go to the theater to see it. But our theaters, I'm in Canada on the West Coast. And, oh, uh, okay. Our theaters have taken a really long time kind of getting going again. Yeah. Um, so I got out of watching movies at the theater and I got used to, I have a video store around the corner too, still. So, oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Man, so I'm I jealous. That a lot. Yeah. You don't see those really that much cool. anymore. <laughs> no, he's got thousands of titles too. He gets stuff wow. pretty quickly too. Like a, within a couple of months of the release date, if he decides yeah. to get that movie in. Um, so yeah, I got away from that for a bit. So I'll probably get back into it soon i'm kind of anxious to go see uh the re-release of the thing which is coming out soon yeah. too i'd yeah, like I'm to hope, see that I, I need to check and see um i'm sure i live in orlando and they we have oh, so okay. many theaters here that i'm sure i'm sure it'll probably be showing somewhere but yeah i would love to see the thing on the on the big screen yeah i never i i saw it back in the day but i i, ne I didn't see it at the theater so i think that would be a really great experience actually yeah yeah I didn't incredible. see the thing until I felt, I mean, I felt like it was kind of late in the game. I saw, I think I saw it in like the nineties or something like that. It, right. was, it was one of those, like you go to the video store and there's certain titles, the, the like the, the, the image, the poster kind of jumps out at you. And that was one right. that always jumped out at me. Cause it was just like this parka with the, yeah. the light coming out of it. Yeah. I was like, ah, that's kind of weird. What is that? I don't know. It took me forever to finally watch it, but when I watched it now, it's like one of my favorite horror movies. So yeah, it is. It's, it's amazing. So incredible. Yeah. You're a Carpenter fan as well. Yeah, yeah. Carpenter's pretty much my favorite horror director for sure. I mean, you know, yeah. Escape from New York, Halloween, The Fog, Prince um, of Darkness. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, Prince of Darkness. He's done yeah. so many big ones. Yeah. He had a he had a big run there back in the uh, the seventies and eighties. Yeah. So and, and uh, you know his his catalog's just impeccable. So I yeah, yeah. He's definitely it. my favorite. Who's your favorite? I love Carpenter. I'm a huge yeah. fan. And um, I like uh, I like Freakin too. Like I'm, I'm really into supernatural horror. So The Exorcist yeah. and that kind of thing. Those are big Oh, yeah. Me. I, lo I love Freakin. Um, yeah. I would die to interview him one day and talk. I don't yeah, think I'm it's sure. ever going to happen. But <laughs> it would be really cool to pick his Those uh, Those documentaries on The Exorcist are almost just as interesting as the movie itself. Because I, I like listening to him talk about his process and everything. And yeah. How he would fire guns on the set, and you know, yeah, people were he like, um, Ellen Burstyn, like, I think she broke her coccyx because <laughs> they, they yeah, literally pulled her. her. So, yeah. The Exorcist is such an interesting movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I really liked it. I, I, I'm still torn between whether I like the third film or the first film better because I think they're both, yeah, good I mean, they're, in both, different they're both ways. excellent, yeah. Yeah, those those are good good films. Yeah, for sure. Um, so recently, have you seen anything? I know you saw a movie yesterday. <laughs> I really want to ask you about it, but I know you're doing a review, so you probably don't want to say much about oh, it. Oh, are you talking about Elvis? Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. Um, as a matter of fact, after Is this, it? I'm going to sit down and record a review, like a full review for it. Okay, but can't wait to see that. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it was it was really really good. Um, I I, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it too much, but I will say like. My dad is a major Elvis fan. I grew up uh, an hour away from where Elvis was. Elvis was born in Tupelo, Mississippi. Oh so, wow! So yeah, my dad was. My dad's like four years younger than Elvis, and yeah. So I, I've That's seen a lot cool. of like I've never seen the Carpenter movie, but I did see there was this uh, TV miniseries called Elvis and Me, and okay. it was based on the book that Priscilla Presley wrote. Oh, okay. And uh, oh, it's kind of a tough watch because. I mean, it it shows the dark and ugly side of Elvis, you know. Whereas right. this movie, I kind of I think it it fo focuses more in on his actual career, right. uh, you know, his as an entertainer. Yeah. And uh, but man, but yeah, it covers like you know pretty much birth to death, and really beautifully directed by Baz Luhrmann too. So right. How was Tom Hanks in it? Good. I mean, Tom Hanks okay, is always I should, amazing. I should stop because we're going to talk about Elvis. Well, I mean, too. he's playing, um, I don't know how much about Elvis, you know, but he's playing Colonel Parker. Yeah. And it was cool because, at least from my recollection, most of the Elvis movies and TV shows, they didn't really cover Colonel Parker as much as they covered Elvis. Whereas this right. movie really, I'd, I'd say the, the heart of the movie is his relationship with Elvis. Right. 
Yeah. So I don't know. Are you an Elvis fan? Oh, well, I mean, not a, a fan fan, like crazy, but yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. how can you not be? He was pretty incredible. Like what a talent groundbreaking. Yeah, he, a, and, and this movie reminds you of that, you know, because okay. the, the they show the first time where he um, made his, I guess his first major appearance and he starts gyrating his legs. <laughs> and back then it was such a scandalous thing. Yeah. And I'd never seen a movie, um, I guess, shine a light on that, that, uh, that era of his life as much as this one did, did because right. it shows like the reaction of the women and everything. So, right. Yeah. It was really good. And the guy that plays him, Oh my God. Amazing. Austin he's Butler. good. Is, yeah. is he, he knew he's a new actor. I, I am. If I have, I don't remember, but I don't think I've ever seen him in anything before. But okay. That's cool. It was like, I was watching Elvis at times in the movies. Like he got oh. lost in the role for sure. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm anxious to see it. Yeah. And I look forward to your review too. I should say quickly too. I will have your socials, your, your YouTube channel linked in the description box below too. So people can check you out and sub to your channel because you are so close to 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> you had to remind me, didn't you? <laughs> I don't even there. like, I don't even like talk about it. It's weird. No. <laughs> it's, you know, the numbers thing, it's so strange because when I started yeah, out, it's I tough. thought, I thought if I can make a thousand subscribers, that'd be the greatest thing ever. Right. Um, you know, and it, it felt like this like unreachable goal when I started yep. out, because it, like I said, I started out as this, just a hobby that I, th I didn't think anybody would want to watch me. I just, I just wanted to talk about movies. Yeah. Maybe YouTube's landscape was a little different back then because now, right. I mean, everybody's doing YouTube now. At least that's yeah. what I'm, I'm noticing. But yeah, I guess once you get to a certain level, then you stop, you stop thinking about, or at least I did. I got to a certain level where I was just like, oh, okay, yeah. that's nice. I made a milestone. And it sounds kind of like pompous to say it like that, but you'll sit, you're, you're, you'll get there and you'll see yeah. your mindset does kind of change a little bit along right. the way. At least it yeah. did for me, but no, would, don't get, don't get me wrong. I appreciate and I love that fifty thousand people are subscribed to me. You know, right? That's it's cool. Yeah, it's definitely cool. I love that you are doing it for to have fun with it still too. Yeah, I think that's, that's very that's cool. Been my goal. Yeah, not everybody talks about it that way. Um, and uh, I love the community because the the horror community the movie community is it is incredible there's just so many people it's so awesome talking about movies and connecting with people and the fact that we can kind of easily do these live streams now and yeah. stuff too is a lot of fun well really the, you know that's because when i started i didn't really know about like horror groups and and, and whatnot so that right. was kind of this really nice i guess a bonus uh and i started my own group called killer flicks uh, back okay. in like 2016. Yeah. And, you know, it's just so cool because you have like direct access to people that have similar uh, interests as you. Oh, I was, I was he, well, he was like, he was like pawing at me. So I was like, <laughs> 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 Hi, Levi. <laughs> yeah, but horror groups are great. You know, I, I've met so many friends along the way. As a matter of fact, I'm, I yep. plan on going to Spooky Empire tomorrow. And I think there's a couple of friends that I know in, in one of the horror groups that are going to be there. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you get to go to a lot of the festivals and things too? You're out that um, way. The, the ones that we have are Spooky Empire uh, yeah. in Orlando. And yeah. I've been maybe, th maybe three times before this. Okay. Yeah. You know, COVID kind of put a damper on all that. So I, right. I, this will be the first time I've been to a, a horror convention since COVID for sure. Right. I've been watching lots of videos on the Monster Palooza thing. and Yeah. I, um, I saw some of those too. I'm very jealous because we get nothing like that up here in Canada. There's just nothing. Oh, that sucks. It super sucks. We get Comic Con, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice when you're <laughs> a horror same. fan and you get you get one that's just horror. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I live vicariously through people's YouTube videos. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't we um, all? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so also, you uh, you're a certified Rotten Tomatoes reviewer, yes? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you still do that? Yeah. Um, uh, if it's um, like if it's a newer release type movie that comes out and, um, you know, I, I, I probably don't get on there as much as I should. I'll say that. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I usually like once or twice a month, I'll go on there and I'll I'll put a review in for like a new release or something like that. Like I'll probably do one that's for cool. Elvis, you know, just write a little blurb, I guess, on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, that's really cool. 
Yeah, it's it's cool. Level. It's something I never expected, but I guess once you get to a, a certain level, then you can apply to okay. become a Rotten Tomatoes. It's a process, you know, because right. you, there's like two parts of it too, because you got to apply to become a Rotten Tomatoes critic. And then you also got to reach out to all these um, organizations to get screeners. You know, it, like all the studios, you got to reach out to Universal. You got to reach out to, you right. know, uh, Disney. And yeah. so there's like five or six, A24, you know, there's like five or six of them you got to reach out to. And then eventually you, you get in their system and you can start getting press screenings, you know. Oh, gotcha. So. Okay. So you do the screeners as well. Yeah. Yeah. I get press screenings from time to time. It's That's cool. cool. Yeah. That's, That's something I never expected. That's uh, when I started out. Um, you know, you, you see these people that get to go to, screenings a few days right. earlier, even like a week or night. Damn, I'd like to do that, you know? And then eventually you figure out how the system works. You know, once you get in there, it's, it's not too, it's not too hard. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. That's fun to be able to do that for sure. Especially with what you're doing. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. I kind of got out of order here with my questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. Okay. So let's go into this. So do you collect physical media as well? Is that kind of a thing that you do? Because there's a huge part of the new upcoming movie community that does that. Um, yeah. Or do you just like to go to the theaters and stream movies and that kind of thing? No, I've always been a, a physical media collector. I, I don't buy as much as I used to, but like right. I'm literally looking at my, my collection of horror right now. Um, I probably have, I mean, I've never even counted, probably a thousand um, Blu-rays. Wow. I have a VHS collection behind me. I probably got like 150 cool. VHS movies. VHS is cool because I just started getting back into that a couple years ago. Right. Um, because I got I got my TV. I named her Jolene, but oh. um, it's a, it's <laughs> cool. a 1983 Color Track 2000. You can see it in all my videos actually yeah. right behind me. Yeah. yeah. But I I got that at a at a Habitat for Humanity. I used to work there, and oh, somebody okay. somebody was donating this TV, and I swear to God, it looks brand new, and it's 1983. Wow, so, cool. Yeah, so I, once I got that, I was like, oh, I guess I should start buying some VHS tapes. And uh, yeah. that that can become an, an obsession. You start you, you start trying to yeah. find titles like Sleepaway Camp and yeah. and you know, um uh, what's what's that what's that movie back there I'm looking at? Okay, like Maximum Overdrive, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those those <laughs> niche those niche VHS titles. And it's fun yeah. watching movies on VHS. So it's just an all it's just a different way to watch, I guess to enjoy the movie. Yeah, that's how I started when I first bought physical media. Columbia mm -hmm. House, I signed up for that. I got my movies, and I used to like wait for them to come in the mail. And nobody I had a ever talked collection. About Columbia House. <laughs> Did it but, just fizzled out? Remember that back in the day? Yeah, you could Columbia yeah. House. You get the movies. Get and the, didn't they do the CDs cents. too? I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think that was part of the catalog that you had to keep going with them. Yeah, you could get I had like a, five CDs or something like that <laughs> for a penny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Really, really fun. Oh, that's cool. That's cool that you you like physical media too. Yeah, do you collect? A, do you like to collect? I mean, it looks like behind you, you like to collect. So yeah. yeah, I do. I don't have a very big collection whatsoever. Like I yeah. have a few hundred titles. That's it. Um, that's cool though. Yeah, if I had kept going from way back when, I would have a huge collection. But I just always thought movies. I didn't think things would go the way that they 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 went, and that these titles you'd wouldn't be able to watch these movies again if you yeah. didn't have the physical copy. So I stopped collecting, but I'm definitely getting back into it now. So yeah, that's, that's, really cool. that's, yeah, that's, uh, there's a lot of titles like that where you don't really thank God for like shutter because you can find some, a lot of those niche titles on shutter and even like right. Tubi. But uh, yeah, there's yeah. quite a few that you, you never see. So yeah, for sure. What are your mm -hmm. favorite streaming services? Shutter for sure, just because I like. I, I probably throw on Shutter at night when I go to bed, uh, yeah. just because I'll look for like some old seventies like Italian horror movie or something like that. Or sometimes I'll throw in what's whatever's new because right. there's like new horror content that you can only watch on Shutter. Like I think Host was a was a new one that came on there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I like Shutter. I Netflix hasn't really been that great lately for me. Anyway, I like. Stranger Things, of course, it's good, but yeah, yeah, uh, they, they didn't Canada really hit miss. Netflix is a thousand times worse than you guys. So <laughs> oh, really? Don't even, oh, don't even. Do I go sound there. spoiled? Okay. A little, little. You know, um, <laughs> you guys have Hulu, right? Uh, Hulu. I I don't have it myself. Um, 
I don't know if we do or not. I know some. Hulu's some... been really good lately because they got like um, true crime TV and and stuff like that. Right. Um. Yeah. There, some new original content. Like, what's that show? Candy. Okay. You ever? It's with uh, Jessica Biel, and she plays this woman who has an affair with her, and you know they're churchgoers and all that. But she has an affair with one of her friend's husbands. Right. And then she kills her with an axe. <laughs> and uh, wow. and this happened, this true story that happened like back in like 1980. Okay. You know? And so the, I'm seeing a lot of these old stories that otherwise you'd probably never even hear of. Right. And, and But like Hulu, Hulu gets like a lot of these, you know? A lot so. of that. Yeah. Um, so new stuff that's coming out, like there's going to be lots of, in the next couple of years, reboots and remakes and sequels and things for, from older stuff like uh, Salem's Lot, Hellraiser, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Are you looking forward to any of those coming out? Hmm. Any new things uh, the, coming The out? remake thing has been going on for, God, like, like it kicked back up, I think, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre back in 2003. Right. Um. And it, I, maybe it's a guilty pleasure type thing, but I'm not going to lie. When when they announce a remake, I first roll my eyes and I'm like, okay, I'll go see it. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just because it might be, there might be something, something there, something new, something fun. Right. Most of the time, it seems like remakes go the other way and, and they're not, I don't know, they don't bring anything new to the table. Like yeah. the Pet Cemetery remake. That yeah. one tried to bring something new to the table, but it just completely failed. Yeah. You know? And, that wasn't and, um, my favorite. Yeah, there's there's some good ones out there. Um, yeah. But for the most part, like like uh, the Firestarter remake, I don't know if you've seen that one yet. I haven't seen it yet. I I didn't like it at all. It's really really bad. Not very so, many people did. You know what I'm really surprised with that movie is why they did it. Because I back in the day, I, I don't think that movie was that phenomenal. The the original one. I, I don't remember it being this massive. Yeah. You know, I never, I still to this day haven't even seen the original. I do like the concept of remaking something that might not have been a big hit. So, cause it, maybe right. at least it brings exposure to that movie. Right. And also when you're remaking classics like Nightmare on Elm Street, right? how do you top that? You know? So yeah, I, I do like the, the, the idea of remaking something that might not necessarily be good or, or the, the audience didn't really gravitate towards it. Right. Or if you're just going to bring something completely new and interesting to the table, but um, right. it seems like more times than not, it's just a cash grab, you know? Right. So that one, you even think Firestarter fell flat, the new one. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. A lot of people did. Really yeah. Bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's rare. I never hear you say things like that. So it's it like, was okay. really bad. Good to know. Yeah. I, I trust that one. I have a series <laughs> on my channel. Like, if, if a movie's bad, I'm going to tell you. And um, I have a series called uh, Drum Dums Rips a New A Hole. <laughs> oh. If a movie's like really bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm proud that's of myself funny. for coming up for that name. So, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the names, okay. Maybe this can be our last question because we said we'd go for about a half hour. Um, how did you come up with your rating system and tell people your rating system for your movies? Cause I think that's okay. so fun. Okay. Um, and by the way, if you want to talk longer, I'm fine with that. Um, okay. Yeah. Sure. If you have, yeah. If you have more questions, yeah, let me know. Okay. I'm in a hurry, but um, okay. my rating system, I kid you not. I literally like thought of it right before I recorded my first review. Cause okay. I, I was, cause I was like, I was going to record my first review and I was nervous and I was so excited okay i'm doing this and then i was like oh shit what am i gonna do for a rating system right. am i gonna just say it's three out of five and yes. so um and by the way my rating system is um highest well i'll tell you the, the highest highest in a sec but the okay. highest is trapped on an island okay that's like five out of five yeah and then you get purchase worthy uh humdrum is the middle um two hours lost yeah. and then uh looped in hell and um, cool. <laughs> I've I've rarely ever given a looped in hell. Right. And there's there's another rating that I created years later called Unicorn. Okay. And Unicorn, uh, I've maybe given that out out of out of you know fifteen hundred reviews, maybe five times. Okay. Maybe seven times, something like that. So that's gotta be a movie that's like, you know, like the thing. I think the thing's a unicorn. Okay. Know? Um, Got but it. yeah, when I was, when I was doing my first review, it was just like those, all five of those just came to me just like that. Yeah. Like, wow. Okay. So I got lucky I think there. That's but... so fun. I like that. <laughs> Usually people just do stars or, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. Whatever out of five. <laughs> I definitely really wanted cute. to come up with something unique to my channel. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's that's kind of what I did. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, What advice would you give to new and upcoming, maybe in the movie community, we should say, YouTubers? Yeah. Oh, man, that question. Um, I, I always tell, because I get this question a lot, uh, people message me, and I always say, do it, first off, because you love it. You know, just right. do it for fun. Yeah. Um, I, one piece of advice I give people is your first year, don't look at your views if you can get away with it. Um, just you know, try to make, try to do better, I guess, and, and try to learn from your past mistakes. But some pe so many people get caught up in the views. And, right. and I've literally had people message me and say, why is my channel not growing? I'm, you know, I'm getting 30 views a video. And I'm like, are you enjoying it? If you're enjoying it, then that's fine. My, my first year, I got like maybe, you know, 30 to 50 views a video. Right. And it, it was something that I never, and I'm being dead serious here. It's something I never even like really um, scrutinized over, I guess. Right. Uh, it, it just kind of happened. Uh, I started, it, it, it happened with like one of my Halloween reviews, like Halloween 6. And I was like, whoa, okay. Somebody's watching. That's weird. Yeah. And it was, and I was like, oh, and then I, I started, you know, maybe taking it a little bit more seriously. I don't know. But I always just tell people just when you start out, just do it for fun. If you want your quality to be amazing, like I think you have great quality there. And I think, I think, Thank you. <laughs> I think if you want that, <laughs> then yeah, get you not get yourself a nice camera, get yourself some nice lights. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I, I will say from a technical standpoint, I do like really good audio. So I, I use like a lab. Right. Um, but I mean, I think I, that's I mean, good too. Everything's cheap, you know, as far as like, if you want good audio, it's not expensive. If you want a nice camera, people, the phones that they have these days are insane quality. Yep. So that's very true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just say do it when you started out, just do it for fun and uh, just enjoy it. And if you want to be consistent, uh, um, if you want, if you want to get more successful, I've heard people say be consistent, but then I've seen people put out a video every day and they get 10 views every time. So you got, you have to, I don't know, you got to find something that not everybody's doing, you know, right. if you're putting out a, a star Wars review, there's going to be another thousand star Wars reviews out there. So the, I think the trick is to find something that not everybody's doing, you know, try to right. think outside the box, Yeah. you know, or even, even in your titles, you know, yeah. maybe you don't want to put, this is a review, work your way around it and, and call it something else. Five reasons why, uh, this movie has this issue or something like that, you know, right. something to stick out, but yeah. So for themes with your, your videos, are you constantly changing depending on just like with your, the movie titles that you choose on your whim on what you're kind of interested in that week? Or do you have segments that you do consistently all the time? Um, I don't schedule anything. I probably okay. should. Um, sometimes I'll, th yeah, you don't either. Yeah, well, so, I mean, I just is, don't work that way. Like, I've tried I know, to. It's hard to keep up. It, it's hard to keep up, and and I think that's the thing too. If you start scheduling everything, at least for me, I start going crazy in my head. Yeah. So I like to just kind of, I like to batch record if I can, and do like maybe three three videos at a time. Any right. more than that, I'll go crazy. My my, right. my bo bo but my blah, 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 my voice is fried, um, and, and my mind is just completely mush. So. Yeah. But I don't schedule anything. Um, so I guess the scary thing is after I've edited my last video and, and there's nothing else to edit, that's my oh shit moment. And I'm like, oh, damn, what am I going to do now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Hopefully there's a new release that I want to cover or something like that. Or, But yeah. oh, something always does pop up. Yeah, you know? so it does. There's always something there, you know, to, to, to grab onto. And you're like, oh, okay, good. I can make this video now. And it doesn't necessarily have to be even a movie review. It can be just like a... Uh, an update like I first for Nev Campbell and screen. Right. Yeah. When that popped up, I was like, Oh, I should, I should, I, cause I don't do that many news updates like I used to, but right. that's a pretty big deal. So I yeah. thought if I do that, how could I make that video kind of interesting? And right. You know, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah I I'm have two uh, uh, friends that are YouTubers as well. We do our spirits and screams on the weekends and we chat a lot and, they go through thousands of titles and movies. So I will always have 
resource material till mm-hmm. day I die and then beyond, I think, because <laughs> there's always new stuff. I find myself having to say, I need to stop and focus yeah. because it's too much. There's just too many things. Oh my God, you are so right. Every right. day. Yeah. Well, sometimes I'll go through a lull and there's like nothing to watch. Right. Uh, but then five titles jump at me. And I'm yeah. like, oh, shit, which one do I even talk about first? Which one do I even put out? You know, right. it's uh, it can be it can be a little exhausting sometimes for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do you like reviewing movies and editing or or live streaming better? Live streaming is definitely easier. Um, it is. That's a tough question because I guess the end result is something to be proud of. Like I've, I've done videos um, where after it's done especially if I do like a catalog title right. and it's, it's a movie that I feel I want to do a good job on this. And I usually want it to be at least like 15 minutes long or something like that. So, right. uh, you know, I'll, I'll put a lot into it, the intro, I'll, I'll, I'll rip the Blu-ray and try to put as, you know, the clips in that are, that are important, but right. the end result when you're done with that and you've spent two, three days, you know, back and forth editing the thing when it's right. out, you do feel kind of a, a sense of accomplishment and you're like, wow, I did that. That's, that's cool. You know, whereas yeah. live streaming, you know, you can, you can live stream uh, as long as you, you know, you put together your thumbnail, you got your nice display like yours again, your background, yeah. but after it's done, it's done. And, and it's, you can walk away from it and it's, and it's easy. But so, right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some people love just doing live stream type videos, commentaries, yeah. Yeah. Not. That's the great thing about YouTube and the horror community. You have 10 different options, 10 different paths that you can choose to go down. You know, mm-hmm. so if you get bored with something like reviews, you can say, yeah. you know what, I'm going to set that aside for a little bit. And I think I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do like maybe some top tens or, yeah. you know, do some, some live hangouts. So right. Yeah. It keeps yeah, it interesting. Kinda, yeah. I like both too. I go through mm-hmm. stages, but I like the, uh, the creative part of editing in that, that I find that mm-hmm. really fun. Do you I, enjoy I editing? Think, I do, yeah. I do. I have an art background, so I oh, love nice. doing the graphics and getting yeah. that all done up and stuff like that. That's a lot I of do fun enjoy to me. Thumbnails. Yeah, that that's kind of fun. And I never know what it's gonna be until like I, I hit publish on YouTube and I'm like, okay, now it's time to do the thumbnail. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and it's oh, just really? Like, yeah. And because I've talked to some people, they do the thumbnail first. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, like I'm sure a lot of people do that, but for me, maybe it's a, maybe I'm a procrastinator or something like that. But after I've done everything, then the yeah. la- as it's uploading to YouTube, I pull up GIMP. I don't know if you use Photoshop or whatever, but I pull up GIMP and I just start throwing you know images back and forth and seeing what works. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Oh, well, that's it's cool. fun though. Well, your channel's amazing. Come on, you you do amazing thumbnails and the whole thing. So, and oh, you you've you. taught yourself to do all of that yeah yeah i taught myself everything i have no background in editing yeah and i'm living proof if i can do it then anybody can do it because i I just sat and you know and plus it's stuff that you learn along the way but when i like i switched to adobe premiere pro right um i think last year for for a good five six years i used adobe premiere elements okay and that was the that was the program that i was comfortable with and so i didn't right. you know, and i'm the type of person i get kind of dug in and and if it's if it ain't broke don't fix it you know yeah and then my computer died on me and so i think at this point i was like oh okay so now I, maybe i can make that leap to adobe premiere pro right. and it was very different and so right. i literally had to kind of just lock myself in a room with my computer for you yeah. know a weekend and just learn it all right and uh yeah. I don't know. What do you use? Do you use uh, Adobe Premiere? I do everything on my iPhone. I do oh, nice. iMovie and I do Canva. See, that's insane. You can do it right there on your phone? That's so cool. It's frustrating though because it's really hard on your eyes because it's so small. But my yeah. laptop is crap right now. And yeah. yeah, I'm so comfortable with doing it this way that I, I'm i scared to yeah, hey, and that's what it. it comes down to. If you if you're comfortable with it, then that's fine. You know, Eventually, I invested in know. a good laptop because if you use Adobe Premiere, it's a pretty weighty program. And I learned that lesson because I tried a uh, my cheaper laptop, and man, it was just like pausing and it, yeah. it was just frustrating. You know, it was it yeah. was the, the program was just too big for it. So yeah, this new computer yeah. that I bought it it handles it pretty well. Yeah, eventually I will upgrade with all of that mm-hmm. and and you know. Uh, 
yeah, yeah, for sure. I have a small microphone that attaches to my phone that I, I, I invested in that right away too. Cause, um, I found the sound quality was kind of a, a big deal thing right off the top too. It that is, it mattered. Yeah. yeah. I've used really, one of those too. Cause when, when we were moving and everything was kind of packed up, I did record a few videos on, on my phone. And so I went on Amazon and I bought one of those lab mics that you plug into your phone. Right. And the sound quality was great. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Not bad. You know, I mean, it could be, could be a lot better too, but you know, down the yeah. road can always add to whatever we're doing yeah, down the can road. Always add. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Do I have any other questions? Um, what are some movies that you recommend people see either old or new stuff that's come out? Um, definitely we'll that 10, 10 to midnight. You ever seen 10 to midnight with Charles Bronson? No, nope. I do like these, these action slashers is what they call them. And, and they're kind of, it, to me, it's like a slasher hidden as an action movie. Disguised right. as an action movie, like Cobra with yeah. Stallone. That's yeah. another one. It's pretty much a slasher, but you just right. have this action star at the, you know. Yeah, I like those type of movies. Silent Rage yeah. is really good with Chuck Norris. <laughs> yeah, it's silly that Chuck Norris is in a slasher movie, but it's like Chuck Norris versus uh, Michael Myers. You know, um, <laughs> Hell Night. I love. I love Linda Blair. You know, I'm a big Linda Blair fan. I met right. her at Spooky Empire. She's an absolute sweetheart. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at my, my collection here for yes. some, for some that kind of jump out at me. Um, yeah. I said, Alice, sweet Alice, uh, last house on the left, the original. I've always been a fan of that one. I have not, it's seen not a movie original. I can throw in. <laughs> it's not a movie I could throw in like over and over, but right. it's an important film. That's what I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, Linda see. Blair. So you met Linda Blair. Have you met anybody else? Yeah. I met, uh, Felissa Rose. Um, I, my thing is when I go to horror conventions, you know, cause you got to go and you got to get them to do it, get a signature or whatever. I always take a VHS tape. Like I took scream and I got Matthew Lillard to sign that one. Right. Um, I took sleepaway camp and I got um, all f Karen Fields, Felissa Rose and Catherine Kami, all three girls signed it, which that's one of my most prized possessions. And Linda cool. Blair signed my exorcist Two VHS. That's cool. Uh, I got a Kane Hodder. Uh, I got a few, few by Kane Hodder. He, uh, Kane Hodder signed mask. I got the, 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 what is it? The complete collection 10 for Friday the 13th. He signed that. Kane Hodder is like one of the most approachable celebrities you could ever meet. Just such a right. nice guy. Yeah. So cool. do you have any, um, any celebrity autographs or anything like that? No, I don't. No? I have one very cool claim to fame that I will tell you when I was younger back home in my hometown, I was working in a hotel gift shop and out of the blue, Johnny Cash walked up. What? And he was with, yeah, okay, and Damn. he was there. I was very young and very, very shy. <laughs> he leaned on the counter, because I can't remember if it was his wife or his daughter at the time was shopping, buying mm -hmm. little amethyst knickknacks and whatnot. He was bored. He leaned on the counter, and he said, hi, I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> and I said, all I could say was, I know. <laughs> that was it. He I know. <laughs> hung out. He was all in black. And I think it was just before he, he fell ill, you know, yeah. just before then. But wow. that was the coolest moment ever. Yeah, that trumps That's... any uh, celebrity signature I've ever gotten. <laughs> Johnny I didn't Cash. get a signature, no. I didn't get it. I should have. But you but... have that memory at least, you know? Yeah. You got to literally meet he... the guy. Nicest man you could mm -hmm. ever want to meet. Yeah, super, super sweet. You just have really good energy. I'd rather meet a celebrity like that, you know, where they just kind of casually come into a store or something like that. Whereas when yeah. you're at a convention... Yeah, I don't know if you listen to uh, the Talk Scary to Me podcast with uh, Danielle Harris and um, Scott Taylor Compton, but they talk about it's interesting because they talk about the the convention circuit and what it's like there. Right. And she says a lot of people don't realize as a celebrity you're touched by thousands of people because you know they give you the hug and then take the picture, and yeah. sometimes it can be, you know, you can have some fans that are a little bit overzealous. They might like squeeze you or hold on, and that's got to be a, kind of a scary right. thing for a celebrity. So. Those yeah. conventions be, can be kind of weird. And then you got the, they were talking about like male celebrities and they kind of prey on the female fans that come in. Right. And uh, it was really interesting to listen to, you know, it's like, wow. Yeah. Um, even like they're at the convention and people are paying to get something signed and whatnot. And then people are trying to sneak a uh, video mm -hmm. and 
like, and people get like that the oh the 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 celebrity was really horrible, but I don't blame them actually. I don't blame them. It's part of like you have no right doing that kind of thing. You That's know? their like, you job. Should, it's an invasion much, you know? too. You know. Yeah. A lot of these horror so. celebrities. I mean, they might not work for years. Uh, they did a movie in the 80s or the 90s, and that's pretty much what they're making their living off of at conventions. Yep. yep. Uh, and so there is a thing, there's such a thing as like convention etiquette. And mm -hmm. um, I learned this on that podcast too. They were talking about like, don't wait in line and walk up to a celebrity and just say hi and not, you know, not give them money and, uh, you know, for, for a signature or something like that. I always wonder, right. is, is that rude to do that, to walk up and just say, Hey, I just got a question. I don't really want anything. Right. They said that's kind of, kind of rude, you know, not so. proper etiquette, not proper. Yeah. Just have, you know, buy the, the photo or, or and, and, you know, and pay for the selfie. Yeah. It's, it's part of the process. So the, yeah. I don't even get in line unless I feel like I want to, uh, to get, to get a signature or something like that. Right. And then yeah. I can talk to them. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. Of course. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that that pretty much covers everything I was going to ask for today. But okay. um, this has been awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, it was really awesome. fun. Thrilled. Uh, it's really nice meeting you. And you're welcome back anytime. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe it's we'll an, get you on honor. one of the live streams sometime too. Yeah, I have my, my DD lives that I do uh, probably like twice a month or something like that. So Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, cool. Well, I am going to put your uh, YouTube channel in the description box. Everybody can check you out and go subscribe to his channel because I want him to hit 50,000, even if he doesn't <laughs> care. I want to see that moment. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it, Karen. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a great rest of your night and um, uh, we'll talk again soon, I'm sure. You too. I have to record after this, so I'm not really looking forward to it. But <laughs> You'll get yeah. it done. You'll get it yeah, done. Yeah, that's what, uh, once it's done, you're, you're happy. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I will say have a good night. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Real interesting and informative discussion. Lee's awesome. So I have his socials all linked in the description box below. So be sure to go to his channel, check it out, give him a subscribe. We want to get him to 50K, right? <laughs> and I guarantee you're going to love his content. It's so awesome. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because it helps me a lot. And subscribe to the channel for more deep dive movie reviews, more interviews like this one. And I'm getting ready to launch the cover of my horror comic book. So excited about that. I'm going to do a special uh, movie review with that too. That should be really, really, really any minute now. Any minute now, I promise. And don't forget to stop by Spirits and Screams Lives on Saturday night on my channel. We always have such a great time with great guests. Don't forget to comment down below. I love chatting with all of you. You know I do. I love you guys so much. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you again next time. Bye guys.